Welcome back, everybody, to the St. Louis Cardinals franchise with a dozen games left to go. The Cardinals sit in first place right now by a half game. And our biggest games on the schedule are coming up with a three-game set against the Cincinnati Reds, who are neck and neck with us in the Central. We have already played the Reds ten times, and they've won the season series to this point, and we are four and six against them. Meaning, if we don't sweep them, they're going to own a tiebreaker against us in the division. We've spent the first two years in the series carrying good records into the All-Star break and then slipping in the second half. Last year, we took a first place lead into the last two weeks and lost it, finishing third in the division and then losing in the wild card round. This season is on the verge of repeating if we can't hold off the Reds and Pirates behind us. And thankfully, we get some head-to-heads to at least have some more control over that. We'll see how far we get today. A lot could happen in this episode, and here are the team leaders going into the final stretch of games. For Hitting War, we haven't checked that out much this year. Brendan Donovan at 5.4, Lars Nootbaar 3.7 lead the team. And for Pitching, we've got Dylan Cease at 3.3, Nestor Cortez 2.9, and surprisingly, reliever, Jojo Romero at 2.5 with how elite he's been this season. Before we begin, by the way, I did look through some info and updated Mason Miller's velocity, but I can't edit his fastball velo to go north of 99 on average. I was also able to edit Michael Kopech to give him a better fastball and then I edited his pitch mix as well as his conversion has changed up what he throws he doesn't throw a curveball anymore and the cutter has become his third pitch I took the velos straight from baseball savant to update these guys thankfully our cardinals have began to turn things around lately with five straight wins Ending the road trip strong in our last game. Ooh, 4-1 to one late innings against the Tigers. Cardinals hold on and make it six straight wins. Dylan Cease does what he does. Seven more innings. We go past the off day of Monday, and now it's a game and a half lead over both Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. Final home games now. We open against the Phillies, and we start off 4-2 Philly leads in the late innings. 27 homers now for Nolan Arenado on the year, and a two-out, two-on scenario against Gregory Soto. Flied on the first pitch, out to right, looks playable, and caught. Mason Miller pitching to Johan Rojas and hitting 99 on that fastball. I did see he was averaging 101 on his on baseball savant. His pitch mix has also changed. I didn't edit his, partially because I'm not sure if his current role in the bullpen in real life is going to be temporary if he ends up going back to being a starter one day. But I think he'll be a bullpen pitcher in this series probably the entire way. And actually, in real life, he's just been a fastball slider guy, not even throwing a third pitch. But I can't make his fastball quite what it is in real life, so I'm always caught between trying to update things to match what players are throwing now versus just accepting our franchise is kind of in a different spot. 3-2 to Harold Ramirez, and he takes the low slider. We'll go fresh arm here with Matthew Liberatore, the lefty who's been solid this season. Bryce Harper is the batter, and then Bohm behind him who mashes lefties. I forget, is Liberatore the pitcher who gave up that big homer last wild card to Harper, or was that a different lefty? This time works so much better. We don't throw him the change up and we strike him out. See if we can pitch a little carefully here to Bohm. He's already three for four. Has the ability to put this game more out of reach. 
And taken off for second base. Contreras will not make the throw in time. And the weak ground ball goes right to Donovan. And we'll go bottom nine, trailing by a pair. Matt Strom coming out, a 1.7 ERA. Righty's hitting 191. And we'll try to get a rally going late. Who knows which of these games could determine if we win the division or not. Oh, of course, he's going for a milestone as well. He has 99 career saves. Jordan Walker, one for three. Three and one. If we can get that leadoff man on, we can threaten to tie the game. Got a feeling we'll get a fastball to hit here. And it's away for strike two. A patient approach. And now a walk. Wilson Contreras now with Walker at first. And Strom's been a little erratic so far. A lot of these takes pretty easy. And I got to make sure I'm letting stuff like that go early in the count. Fly ball right center. That's going to stay in the park and be out number one. Levon Soto, is this a spot where you want the rookie? I think we got to go Mason win. It worked out for us last episode. Brought him in, pinch hit against the lefty. Boom, two-run homer. We're looking to see if Lightning can strike twice. Cold zones, though, those are not uh, promising. And a fastball goes right down the center. Reds currently, I think they just won over the Brewers, so their game is close to done. So far, patience, the right approach against Strom. Count is two and one. That one hit him on the hip. We got two aboard. We're bottom nine, and it's Victor Scott. We know he's a tough guy to double up. We're going to leave Scott out there for this chance. Strom, 14 pitches in, now a strike on the inner third. And now Strom's got his first 0-2 of the inning. And strike three, fishing at the slider low. So Donovan will have the lineup turnover, and here we go. That's inside and came close to hitting him. And at the top of the zone, it's fouled off. And we're down to our last strike. And Strom's 23rd. Just a piece of it. That's strike three. Did not see it well. And that is the end of the game. We create a threat but can't come through. And the winning streak ends there. Again, bulk of the offense supplied by one of the newest Cardinals. Still not sure if I should be calling him Luis Robert or Rober. Like, I just prefer to go with whatever the player would want. I don't know. The whole MLB calls him Robert, so I've never been certain. But anyway, 85 and 67. We'll check it day by day. Now Reds and Pirates within a game. Sonny Gray against Zach Wheeler, game two. And now, Ryan Helsley trying to close these guys out. For this one, I'm just going to sit back and see what Helsley does. One run game. Johan Rojas, and then the lineup turns over. Helsley looking for another save. He's been top five in the National League and now finds himself tied with Edwin Diaz. I'm inclined to stick with him. And there's a key reason why. We'll see how this outing goes. Early in the year, I talked about his, not even early, but earlier, he was having like a 1.5 home run per nine. And over his last like 20 innings, he's yet to allow another home run as he strikes out Rojas. So now his home run rate is in line with what it's been in years past. If he's still getting strikeouts and how the home runs are going down, 
I think he's getting back into the right form. But now Trey Turner and the top of this lineup after Trey, it would be Harold Ramirez. So thankfully Harper's hitting cleanup. Outside of a disaster, we shouldn't see him. Trey Turner takes a fastball at 100. 102 to get that second strike. Got him on the slider, and Helsley's one out away. Now Ramirez will look to extend the game. Drifting outside a slider. Reds won again today. So at the moment, they're tied with us. We can pull back ahead with one more out. Fishing at 101. And now we go 3-2. We know it's been tough for Helsley to get those 1-2-3 innings. Pirates won their game as well. We could be looking at like a three-way tie. 3-2 and still battling. In play and right at short. It's Soto to finish things as the Cardinals win it and hang on to first place for another day. A couple things on the ticker caught my attention. I want to go check out. The big bats, that's what we like to see. Multiple hits for Walker, Robert, Newt Bar. But one thing I noticed with the White Sox, we haven't talked about them much. Garrett Crochet with his last start became a 20 game loser. ERAs aren't looking great. And yeah, has not been that dominant in the series. The next thing I saw was something about Otani and a pitching outing where he didn't have a single out. So I wasn't sure if he had gotten hurt or anything, but doesn't seem he's on the injured list. Final game against the Phillies. 3-3 late innings. This one belongs to Philadelphia. All these games very low scoring and they put up a run in the ninth. Off of Hunter Harvey, who I think has, I don't know if it's right to call his year a disappointment, but it, it seems like his low lights have been really damaging. And that puts us a half game behind Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Here we go with eight games remaining. We need the offense to get hot. We need the best bats to step it up. And we're going player lock now with Nolan Gorman, who leads the team in home runs and I believe RBIs. So we'll see if we can get some runners aboard for him here in this game and his first at bat will end up leading off the second instead. 33 home runs, 93 RBIs. It's been a really good year for him. One of the few players on the team who has had more of a career year now as opposed to last year. Fly ball hit into right field, traveling back, but in the park for out number one. Pirates won an extra innings against the Mets. This is going to be a fight to the final day, it feels like. Pirates just won seven straight. Meanwhile, we have a shutout in the works. Brandon Williamson having a good outing. And now one on for Gorman. That's going to center on a line and caught. Couple good pitches to work with, but two fly outs for Nolan Gorman. Tink Hentz going toe to toe with Williamson, shut out through five, and it's finally broken up with the bottom of our order helping get things going, a double from Mason Wynn. So as we go bottom six, a runner on for Gorman. That's what we're looking for, but two out in front. Gorman facing a 3-2 count. Popped up late on the fastball. And Nolan Gorman now 0 for 3 on the day. A lot of low scoring games lately. This one no different. We'll see how deep Hence goes. He is not someone that's gotten a lot of complete games, but this might be a chance. 
Is Marcus Stroman relieving now? That's what it appears. one nothing. And got us to wave at the sinker there on the first pitch. I've disabled player lock now. And we'll see what the ninth inning gives us. Fly ball, deep to left, back on it, and oh, it's gone! A two-run shot the other way for Nolan Gorman. That's two closer to 100 RBIs on the season and a very big home run. I was just looking for something not down that we could drive. And finally, we got it. And now Contreras sharply ends the eighth inning. And we hope we won't grab a bat the rest of the night. Tink Hentz going for a complete game shutout. Maybe I just let him do his thing here. He's done eight innings without me. I know in the A's franchise, I probably screwed one too many of these up. And Spencer Steer is going to end the shutout on that one. That's 110 off the bat. Thank you for a great day, Tink Hentz. That'll be enough for this game, I think. And he will be exiting after another brilliant game. And here comes Helsley. Ellie De La Cruz and a fastball hitting the corner at 100. 101. Cincinnati down two and a full count. And not a guy you want to be walking here. Lifted, Scott Manning center is back and gloves it. And now we're falling behind Matt McClain. Nothing quite clicking here. And a four pitch walk will bring up the tying run for Cincinnati. David Fry. This guy's had some huge hits against the Twins. I, I'm a little scared of David Fry. I believe I'm thinking of the right player. Fry's behind it, 102. And got him at 89. I wonder, like, is it actually good practice? I'm not sure if anybody here would be able to know. But let's say you could face a pitching machine who would throw even faster than an MLB pitcher would. And you could practice against 105. Is that what you gotta do to be able to like, get some reps against stuff like this and to get better at it? Like, I don't even know how you approach having to hit a 102 or a 103. Got him looking, one, two, three. And that at bat anyway. And St. Louis picks up a huge win over Cincinnati. All season long, the starters have been going deep, giving us a chance to win games just if we can scratch across a couple runs. And that's what happens here thanks to the late Gorman home run. Ten strikeouts, eight innings for Tink Hentz. We move a half game above Cincinnati, but the Pirates are alone in first with a 9-1 record in their last 10. And the way things are looking with the wildcard standings, one of these teams is going to miss out. The Cubs might be too far out with a 4.5 game deficit. Between the Pirates, the Cardinals, and the Reds, one's got to go. And we got to do whatever it takes to make sure it's not us. Game two against Cincinnati. We got Dylan Cease taking the mound today. Whenever he's starting, you feel like this is a game we're going to win. 14-9. and nine. He has lost a fair amount of his starts. But a 3-1-6 ERA and a 1-1-5 whip. Let's get this one underway. And we got a pair of singles, a walk, and Arenado clears them with a double. Excellent first inning. 3-0 lead for Dylan Cease after one. You like your chances there. 
And we got Jordan Walker getting the player lock treatment this time as we go from the City Connect uniforms to either alternate or uh, older. I forget. These might just be alts. We will try. Late on at 93 at the top of the zone. Home run! Jonathan India gets the Reds on the board as we'll go bottom three. That's down the line! A fair ball into the corner! And Walker will have a two-out double. That was 109. It's all up to Contreras now, and he strikes out to finish the inning. 3-1 game. Dylan Cease, meanwhile, gets out of the fourth with no more damage. Then a 1-2-3 fifth. We got a Luis Robert home run. Victor Scott doubles home a run in the sixth. The pitching was dominant for us in the first game against the Reds, and it's repeating in the next. Ashcraft now in. It's a 5-1 Cardinal lead. Arenado on first for Walker. We'll take the cutter away. And late on that one. It's going to be an easy pop-out for Josh Naylor. Mason Miller's in the game now, and he's... Striking everybody out. Ninth inning. Mason Miller just got six straight strikeouts to finish the game. And the Cardinals take the first two in this series. Which means the final game will give a season series winner. And a tiebreaker that might decide who is the odd team out. We're going to keep trading spots in the standings it appears. And the Cardinals move to 88 and 68. I think we got ourselves a game that warrants the full game attention. There are a lot of players that could use the off day. I don't know if everybody's going to get it. We're about to have just a travel day the game after, or the day after. I think I want our big bats in there still mostly. I'll give Contreras the day off. He's the catcher. He might need a little more time to recover. And with Victor Scott kind of struggling, I actually like the idea a lot here of letting him maybe pinch run late in this game instead and giving Norris Sullivan the start. Okay, Arenado needs the day off too. Okay, Luis Robert, I guess everybody's getting the off day now. So this is going to be a little bit trickier of a game then. We're facing a good pitcher in Hunter Green. It's one of the biggest games of the year, and we're going to have to make sure a lot of these guys sit. Give me Tommy in left today, and then instead of Joe Adele, we'll uh, make sure it's Tommy and Mason win in the lineup today. Game of the week, indeed. Last home game of the year. Last head-to-head -head with Cincinnati. If we win, our odds of making the postseason are so much higher. If we lose, that could be a devastating tiebreaker and would pull them to within a game of us. And we still have two against the Twins on the road and three against the Pirates. And that's going to be tough to win like three or four of those games. Pittsburgh's 9-1 over their last 10. This is what you want to see. Intense baseball down the stretch. And Corbin Burns, the 2021 Cy Young Award winner, takes the mound. Ellie De La Cruz leads things off. And we're underway in the rain. See if a possible rain delay impacts this game. We're already having to use more of the bench. Could be all hands on deck in the home finale. I'm already hearing thunder, by the way, so that leads me to think we're going to see a delay sometime. But we're starting 3-2 and two against Ellie, and he spoils it. Got him! Nine pitches and a strikeout. Buy him at 95. Corbin Burns, 0-2. That is in the dirt. Really enjoyed my last game with him in the previous episode. And we got two strikeouts to kick this one off. Maybe we can strike out the side. Here's India. He 
got him. Three strikeouts in the first. We could see a lot of them today. As we got Burns up against Hunter Green. Green comes in with a 26% strikeout rate. We'll see how much of a challenge he is for a lineup that is not complete. A lot of guys are on the bench today. Brendan Donovan starting us off. The average climbing again, but India will spoil this one and then screws it up with an error in E4 to get us started. Wow, Lars actually has the highest average for us this season. Could Lars finish with a nice 300 average? There's a look at the slider. That is pretty nasty. Wow, the Reds are currently fifth in the wild card right now. And that's a good record. That's respectable. Like, there might be a 90-win team that just doesn't make it, even with an added wild card spot. Three and two on Lars, with Gorman and his power awaiting. It's ball four. An error and a walk as we go to Gorman. And Hunter Green's a little all over the place here. When the fastball's missing like that, something's off. Three and zero. Oh. I don't know if I'm green light here. It's going to have to be really nice. And it was not. Ball four. What a chance in the first. Jordan Walker. Fly ball into the gap in right center. That's going to get down. Everybody go. Ground rule double. It'll play to pair. Fast start for St. Louis. Our first ball put in play has us up to nothing. I haven't seen those like win percentages a whole lot in this game. Like the scoreboard, I think, showed that all the time in the previous game. I liked seeing that. As someone who enjoys like the statistical side of the game and like the minutia, like pitch to pitch, how every at bat can impact positively or negatively your odds of winning i wish that was always available it said after that we had 81 percent chance of winning tommy oh that was only strike two not gonna be content with two here i need one more and not gonna get it on that finally an out for green and this is where it gets interesting six through nine are all Regular backups. But Mason Wynn has had his moments this season. And he's been hitting the ball hard, which I'm not sold on him being the shortstop of the future, but that's one thing that gives me a little more hope. 98 and a strike. Wow, filthy slider. That's a devastating combination when he can locate. Strike three. And then Ivan Herrera, who's actually done great this year. Very impressed with him. And Green Slider is starting to, uh, I think, establish some more confidence. We're just looking for a line drive up the middle. There's plenty of space. And the changeup is broken out to end the inning. Could have been a whole lot worse for Hunter Green. And here's their big deadline acquisition, Francisco Lindor. In my notes, by the way, as this is hooked to right, Newt Bar back, makes the catch. They just showed the home plate umpire. It's Dave Lawrence. I wrote in my notes from the playoffs last year, he does not call the bottom consistently. If his strike zone is the same as we've seen in the past, that's something to keep in mind. It was so bad, I had to write a note about it to be ready for next time. So far, his strike zone is a non-factor. So that's the kind of pitch I think he was calling poorly. Got him! Don't need a strike zone when they're swinging at that. 
My man brought a sign that literally just says K. I no longer have Levon Soto starting every day at short. That was just a little experiment. Uh, give him some experience and to get Tommy Edmond maybe a little out of his funk. I think his cold streak still stands and Soto taps it. It'll be an easy play. And then Norris Sullivan, the rookie. Spent the first month or so with us at the bigs and then back to AAA to hone in on some of those skills. Hit around 250, 260 all year down there. Sully to left center. Looks playable and is. On a line to Sullivan. He's getting center field today. Corbin Burns off to a very strong start. He almost gets Candelario on three pitches. Flips it. Edmund is over. Should have space. Two down. See, there it is again. That's the strike that... I'm frustrated he doesn't call consistently enough. Weekly hit, Soto playing third, and that's a perfect first trip through the order. A drive in the air to deep right center. That's back, and that is caught right in front of the fence. Nolan Gorman with a 3-2 count. Pitch 48 from Green. Nearly hits him. Three walks, an error, and one hit so far for St. Louis. And two RBIs for this guy, Jordan Walker. Gotta lay off those sliders. He's good with those. That one hurts to miss. Timing on it was pretty good, too. Another 3-2. That's ball four. So, four walks off of Hunter Green. So far, a patient approach has been the right one. Energy is depleting pretty quickly, too. If we had nobody out here, I'd really think about bunting them over. But instead, Tommy Edmond trying to... Increase our lead, but man, it feels like none of my good swings with him have been rewarded lately. A drive to center now. Way back, and that ball is out of here! Never mind, Tommy! It's a three-run homer. I can be patient, but sometimes not patient enough. I just reverse commentator cursed myself in a good way it's it's kind of a pretzel there the logic and everything but five nothing cardinals and now herrera has got a sharp one through the infield and that's our first single of the game Already action in the Cincinnati bullpen. Couldn't have asked for a much better start given the weight of this game and our lineup for today. Hunter Green still getting strikeouts as he finishes the third and we'll see how much longer he's asked to pitch. But we're making our hits count today and it is 5-0. At this point, we're hoping the rain and any delay holds off for a little while. We don't want the bullpen in play. Fly to Tommy and left. And now out in front on the chopper to Soto. That's the first hit of the game for the Reds. It's Jonathan India with two gone. And now Lindor softly, and he's out at first. 
And we're already into this Reds bullpen. Just three innings for Hunter Green. And now we're getting Marcus Stroman. And he hits the first batter he faces. Norris Sullivan on first base. And hopefully that's temporary. He is in there with a steal. And Sully's got his second stolen base in his baseball career. Whatever it takes to pull that ball, I guess. And now hoping Lars can bring home that sixth run. Nope, not like that. Having trouble, obviously, reading his slurve. I've had a couple awful swings on it. And that was the one I wanted right there. Right center, Gorman's trying to split the gap, and it's run down. Donovan lays out but can't save it. Base hit for Cedric Mullins. Reds in that area of the game where they just need to get something and at least one of these runs back. Christian Encarnacion Strand now at the plate. He's got some power. Nasty. That's a great pitch. But the count now full. And eventually, Encarnacion Strand draws the walk. Two on for Cincinnati with one gone. Here's Candelario. Left over the plate, but it is skied for Sullivan. And he's not going to be tested. And a fly ball hit to right center. A couple reach, and they're stranded. Right center, Walker gets behind another one, and that ball is run down. Not much going right for Cincinnati in this game. It is 5-0, we're in the sixth. Ellie De La Cruz sharply to third, and Soto retires him. Pitch counts have been awesome. Not a single 20-pitch inning yet for Burns. Got him looking. Fast start to the sixth. India again gets a hit. It comes with two down. And now Lindor gets one up the middle. And the Reds back with another threat. Grounder, Donovan has that one. A lot of scoreless innings the last couple episodes with Corbin Burns. Soto under one, deep to right, but runs out of gas. And Sullivan will take his try now. That's to deep right center. And that one is caught as well. Believe it or not, the Reds have out-hit us to this point. And it's 5-0 Cardinals. And they continue to out-hit us. We'll see if Burns can make it through this 7th. 90-plus pitches into the day. And an easy play in right. That'll be Newt Bars. One gone. Candelario hitting a 1-2 count. Smoked past win. Just out of his reach. Making the turn to third now. And the Reds have two aboard. That was as close as I've seen one come without being caught. I thought Wynn had it. I think it might have been close enough, and maybe it was just that, you know, you're not going to make that play every time. Yeah, that is just over the glove. But I think here I'm open to making a change, and I want lefty JoJo Romero. 
Another great outing for Burns. We'll see if that shutout for him holds. But if anyone can save it, it's this guy. Romero gets the catcher, Stassi. And a double play ball. Soto starts. Not bad. Two outs on one pitch, and Burns still hasn't given up a run. Nice piece of hitting there by Nolan Gorman. It's a two-out single and only our fourth hit of the game. If we're only getting our fourth hit in the seventh inning, you'd assume if it were 5 nothing that the score could be flipped. Strowman's essentially been their second starter today, and we have not gotten much going against him. But the Reds are running out of time. We're in the eighth inning. A loss here, remember, is so damaging. We would take the season series, and we had to get a sweep to do it. And here we are, six outs away. Ninety-six and by him. No rain delay yet. The Thunder kind of playing tricks on me. That's flied to right center. Newt Bar is there. Trying to bury this one inside and a miss strike three call on the slider. There we go. That'll do. That's his third two out hit. If only they could get somebody on for Jonathan India. We got Lindor down 0 2. And struck him out. Another left on for Cincinnati. Why'd I ever doubt you, Tommy? Big three-run homer earlier gave us some comfort. Tommy Edmond will reach with a walk. 0 for 3 and 3 strikeouts for Mason Wynn. And we've gotten a couple here that he hasn't been able to do much with. And then fishing. Just haven't had good two-strike swings with him. That's frustrating. Oh, my! Deep to left. 114! That's way out of here. 464. One of the biggest home runs of the entire franchise. Belongs to Ivan Herrera. That came out of nowhere. He might be our secret weapon this year. He's been great off the bench. What's he doing hitting one 460 like that? My God, what a swing. Soto, yes, finally. He's a ground ball hitter from what I've seen so far, but finally gets one to go his way. All right, Sully. After watching the catcher go 460, you must want to follow it up. I want to know, like, I've noticed this even since, like, uh, when I played baseball in high school. But, like, I want to know the percentage of... Are, are strikeouts and one pitch outs more likely immediately following a home run? Because that's what it feels like. Ugly. I can't lay off anything low right now. There's got to be some numbers on that. Donovan. That's foul. Even watching, like, baseball over the years as Donovan barrels it up, but it's out. How many times have you seen, like, a two-out home run, they're showing replays of it, and abruptly cut to the next batter, like, grounding out on one pitch, and then they cut to commercial? I feel like I've seen that hundreds of times. I gotta change Anthony's glove color here. That's a nice Marlins-themed glove, but I'm sure we can get some new laces for it. Anthony Bender gets the ninth. 
in what's been a, a very nice game for us. Got off to a fast start. One hit, two runs in the first. And then Tommy goes deep. And we never look back. So I believe we'll have played four series against the Reds this year. And unless they're about to come back from a seven-run deficit, three of those series will have resulted in sweeps. These have not been very competitive individual series as Mullins gets a hold of one and the Reds are on the board. Hey, I just watched the Twins have a seven-run ninth inning. This isn't over. Unfortunately for the Twins in that game, they were down by eight. Back to back. Encarnacion Strand. Solo and way gone. There's two. Well, after dominating so many innings, we were bound to give up some runs. Just happens to go against Bender. So we'll bring in Hunter Harvey before things get too interesting. Three and one. Come on, guys. Two homers and now a walk. Last stand for the Cincinnati Reds in this series. Stassi already grounded into one double play. All right, come on. Ground ball through the hole and four consecutive reach. I don't want to pitch him a fastball right now. They have two homers and a single off of fastballs in this inning. Ellie De La Cruz. Oh, that's flipped. Edmund can't make the catch. Late break to third, and I didn't throw to third base. Not sure we would have landed there in time. The bases are suddenly loaded. I am now leaning forward. You know that meme? This is serious now. Stuart Fairchild. Bases loaded. Five run game. Nervous time in St. Louis. Imagine I do like a delay right here. Big swing and miss. Fairchild strikes out. One more. And it's Jonathan India. With two outs, he has three singles. India, deep to left. You gotta be kidding me. It's a one run game. At the 11th hour, a bullpen meltdown has made this a one run game. Third homer of the inning. What is going on? Jonathan India having an incredible night with two outs. And now they got Francisco Lindor. Like, he has the chance to tie the game. Mound visit. You guys got to quit messing around. Second mound visit. Get Ryan in there. And what's been one of the most shocking innings of the series? The Cardinals lead by just one. Lindor versus Helsley. Fouled off, strike one. We're going to challenge him up and in there, but it's a little too high. And just off the plate now. Wow, thank you for swinging. Big strike two. Come on, Ryan. He takes the curve. Three and two. He fouled it back. Off the plate. And the tying run is on. 
I can't believe what's happening right now. How about a mound visit? Our third of the inning. The confidence. I think his confidence might have dropped from that visit. 101 and a strike. The first 26 came rather easily. Number 27's been elusive. Wow, took it over the middle. How are they fouling this pitch off? Blocked by Herrera. He struck him out! We earned that one. That was exhausting. This was supposed to be simple, guys. Seven nothing in the ninth inning. You let them come that close. We sweep the Reds and significantly damage their playoff hopes. 12 hits for Cincinnati to our six. And they put up all their runs in the ninth inning. This is the kind of game where if you simulated, you're like, why are they getting six in the ninth inning? Simulating is so unrealistic and ridiculous. I can hardly believe we played that. So that uh, two-run homer for Herrera late ended up being a pretty big deal, right? That is a huge win. Biggest win of the season right there. We'll sim past our off day on Monday, the travel day to Minnesota and then to Pittsburgh for our final five games of the season. But we end today's episode up by a single game. So regardless, this is going to come down to the last series, whether it's needing one to clinch or maybe game 162 ends up mattering. The Pirates are about to play two more against the Marlins. They lost the first game. And as a little preview here, Skeens and Keller pitched the first two. So Blake Snell, Johan Oviedo, and Game 162, if it's important, will be Mitch Keller and Corbin Burns. We get Hentz, Cease, and Burns in that series. I feel very good about having them face the Pirate Bats. The Reds are currently out of a playoff spot by a game and a half. The Pirates would hold the final wild card in a tie with the Diamondbacks. It's looking more and more like a 90-win team is going to miss. But we took care of business against Cincinnati the way we needed to. And next episode, we look to finish the season and crown a new NL Central champion. It'll be somebody brand new in the franchise. And we're hoping it's us this time. Thank you for watching today's episode, a thrilling one in our first full game in a couple episodes. Leave your thoughts down below and please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Cardinals franchise action. Have a great day and I'll see you next time, everybody.